Hey all, Phil Zio from One Wall Studio here, and this time I'm going at it live with a face cam, and I'm going to be talking about one of the coolest things that has ever existed in the history of recording called parallel compression. Now, some people know it as New York compression, some people know it as, well, you know what, whatever, let's get right into it. So this is going to be about the right way to parallel compress. Okay, cool. So let's listen to what we have so far. I'm just going to play a little bit of this verse into the transition into the chorus. Cool. So now that we've got a general feel for the flavor of the song, what am I going to be parallel compressing, you may ask? Well, one of the most popular things to parallel compress is the drums, and here's how to do it the right way. So, if you feel like the kick, the snare, and the toms could all use a little bit more either beef or presence or character or whatever you want to call it if you feel like they could be impacted positively then the truth is that's all that matters that's what you want to do so you want to add some character you want to do something cool you send them all to a track like this you'll notice that i have them sent to the slr slash parallel track and i've got a send going from the kick track sent piece pre-fader which doesn't really matter snare pre-fader toms pre-fader but post fx so you could do this any number of ways in fact i might even want to do the toms pre fx who knows so again this is just to illustrate a point so now that we have that sent from each of the tracks either pre fader post fader or pre fx i can do this So this is what's being sent. Now the thing about parallel compression is you can choose to do any number of things you want. One thing that I kind of like to do is use this plugin by Plugin Mix called Clarisonics. And if you notice, it's mostly a sub-focusing filter with like a boost in the low end and it's also got a clarity knob. So let's hear what those things do. Sounds a lot like a high shelf to me. Sounds like a low end boost to me. Sounds like a band filter or something that's pushed up. And it's got a couple of different modes. Now, the tool you use is not nearly as important as what you do with it. So. Let's get a, uh, maybe a little bit more fatness, but this time I want to go for like hardcore clarity. So. Here how I'm changing the character of the drums there. Cool. So now I can choose literally any tool. In fact, I'm going to go with the stock compressor. Recomp. And just because I want to throw some impact onto it, I'm going to run it into a preamp. So preamped by LVC Audio, just because I can. And I'm going to scoop out 150 hertz, just because I can. And there's a little bit of a rumbly sound there. So now that I have that, I'm going to run it straight into, let's say, a clipper, just for fun. Now that I have this clipper, doesn't really matter what I'm doing with the clipper, it's more that the clipper exists that matters. Bring up the level to be pretty consistent. I'm also going to clip it on the output from 
preempt. So now it's a pretty horribly mangled signal. I'm just gonna... So now it's just barely audible. That's how I usually like to do it for the drums so that they stick out a little bit more during the parts that really need it. You hear how it's subtle, but it just barely brings out the character of the smack and the punch of the drums. Well, that's what we're going for with this kind of parallel compression. There is actually another kind of parallel compression that I'd like to talk to you about, and that is air parallel compression. So this is going to be called an air channel. And here I'm going to be sending not just the shells and such, but also I'm going to be sending some rooms very gently. I'm going to be sending the snare. Very hard, but pre-FX. Going to be sending the toms. Very hard, but pre-FX. I'm going to be sending the kick to the air channel. Everything's sending to this air folder. I want a little bit more room. I'm just going to use plus 10 dB because I like the EQ on it and I like running into the compressor. I'm going to crank the crap out of this stuff. Give it a little bit more air at like 15k. Maybe a little bit more smack at 8k. And that's the whole point. After I've high passed it and given it that crazy punch, I'm going to run it into here. Make the attack as hard as possible, as high as possible. I'm going to run into the limiter. And then, just for fun, I'm going to clip it again. Make everything sound like a little bit more trash canny. But the purpose of this is to also blend in subtly. That makes it a little bit more lively. I know it sounds like a really quick, easy, dirty trick to get more high end or get more punch or smack or whatever it is in the top end, but that's really what most parallel compressing is. So if I were to even combine the two, You now get a lot more of a roomier, airier vibe with just a hint of that liveliness in the background, which is kind of what I'm going for with this track, because I could do more room track, but I kind of like the level the room track is at. I just wish it was a little bit more expressive in the background, and really that's what having these so low is all about. You can really combine parallel routing schemes, and here's another example of that. I'm going to do a parallel scoopy bass track where I take the bass I do that traditional smile curve that you see in a lot of these things where they just boom boom but then I'm also going to high pass it so smiley face low pass to like 5k and then smash the crap out of it probably with something like pawn shop comp by Corn F Audio. This is a pretty cool boy right here.
do some of that gnarliness with it. with the real bass line. I'm really just driving it hard, but I'm driving it in parallel instead of driving it on the track, which is a fun way to use parallel compression or parallel saturation for the bass. Another thing you can do with parallel saturation or parallel compression, you may have seen this before in one of my MixFix videos, is using a parallel EQ to fill a hole in a rhythm guitar part. Let's look at where there might be a hole in this rhythm guitar. Uh... So there's holes at like 150 and like 1.7k, but that's not bad. What I want to do is I want to increase the low end of the guitars and that little bit of spikiness. So here's a cool trick, basically filtering. I'm going to boost the heck out of it with a resonant filter at like 60 hertz. Push all this down. Crank up 1.7. This is going to sound pretty funky, but don't mind me. Now let's say a little bit of air up here, like 11k. And then a cut off here so it doesn't get in the way of the crackiness of the drums parallels. Keep in mind, this is going to be pretty funky. So... You hear how funky that sounds? Let's go with the tape. Free tape plugins for the win. I can really push this thing. Maybe use the compressor from plus 10 dB. I'm just going to use it as a limiter. It just fills in those places a little bit. Another optimal use for it would be automating that parallel compression down so that during this section, it's a lot softer and there's way more contrast. At that point, it's basically emulating what a pedal would do, which is emphasizing different parts. So if you didn't record a guitar part with a pedal, you could do this with a sidechain filter. And it acts like stepping on a pedal. Hear how it really just fills out the edges of it a little bit more once it kicks back in? Yeah, that's one thing that you can use a parallel compression, parallel saturation, parallel cue, whatever you want to call it. This is all about doing parallel mixing tricks. Well, that's a good name for the video. All right, so then you get this lead thing going on. How would you do it with a lead? Here's what I would do for a lead. Funny things about parallel leads. You know you can mix with reverbs in parallel. Mix the lead guitar parts through. But, did you know? 
You can blend stuff in parallel. And create an extremely airy room sound with an EQ. That's very resonant. And then... You could use something like gain reduction. To create an effect. When you do that, you can do these crazy, unrealistic structures of like bombastic rooms with a really basic plate. You can do an extended sustain off of that. So if you listen to the guitar part right after. The sustain just has like a crazy long tail, and that's pretty cool. Throw a chorus on it, see what that sounds like. Make it a really long chorus. It just gives it this like really weird vibe, and I like it. I like messing with effects as much as the next guy, if not more so. On to the last thing that I would personally use it for, is the classic air trick. So, if you were to use, on a vocal, a parallel air trick. Let's check this boy out. So right now I'm sending these vocals to a plate, and not much else. So if you listen to this section, there's not a lot of excitement going on here, and I'm just going to automate this air trick in for just this section. Maybe I'm scared. Maybe I am torn. Maybe I can leave my bed. Maybe I could cry. Maybe I So I do want to DS it so that the S's don't get nasty. And honestly, I'm feeling a distressor for this one, so I want to smash the heck out of it. And then there's a little bit of noise in the background, and I don't want the noise to be consistent. 
So, I feel like I should low pass it a little. And then drop it down. So that just gives it a much more in-your-face kind of intimate feel, almost like ASMR. I appreciate you guys for sticking around. I hope you learned something in the comment section below. Please tell me if you did, and leave suggestions, comments, whatever you want. I'm Phil Zio, and I am signing out. Peace.